Hi folks, thanks for tuning in for this week's Nutrition Tip with Nancy. Glad you could watch this video either live or recorded. If you have questions for me, be sure you use the chat feature to post your questions. I can always answer them in this session or in upcoming nutrition topics. So let's get started. A couple of episodes ago, I gave you four food habits for better health. And one of those food habits was to eat copious amounts of vegetables. Oftentimes, after I give that piece of advice, the follow-up question is, well, should I eat my vegetables cooked or raw? And my short answer to that is yes, eat them. It really does not matter significantly whether you eat your vegetables cooked or raw, but there are advantages of both methods. So I'm going to cover those today. And, you know, while I'm on the topic, you can buy frozen vegetables or fresh vegetables. You can, again, eat them raw or cooked. You can also eat them pureed. You can eat them sometimes even dehydrated. Just eat your veggies and strive for those six servings a day. Now, if you're going to cook veggies, the first and only rule you need to remember is do not overcook your veggies. If you're cooking veggies, they should be cooked until they're tender crisp. That means that they just, a fork can easily puncture them, but not slide in just really quickly. So there's some resistance. Cooking can be done in a steamer basket, in a microwave, and also they can be stir fried. All three methods minimize contact with water, and that is the key to retaining maximum amount of nutrients and water in cooking because heat and water are enemies of nutrients and vegetables. Now, of course, if you're preparing a soup or a stew where you're going to consume the liquid, then boiling is fine. However, again, the less cooking time, the better. So I'm going to give you five tips that will maximize nutrient availability in your vegetables. Number one is to actually consume the liquid that's left in the pan after cooking vegetables. So if you have, you know, that green liquid in the bottom left over from broccoli, you could put it in a soup or you could add it to a smoothie. So these are things you can do to utilize that cooking liquid. Number two is to cut the food after you cook it rather than before. So for example, if you're going to um, cook some potatoes that you might use as a, in a potato salad or hash browns or some other dish where you want your potatoes pre-cooked, cook those potatoes in the largest chunks possible. That means if you're using new potatoes, you don't have to cut them at all. This way, there's less exposure to heat and water. And then when you're preparing these vegetables, if you don't need to peel them, don't peel them until after they're cooked, if you're going to peel at all. Now, in the case of carrots, for example, maybe a good hearty scrub to get off dirt and roots and things might be in order. But if you don't like the taste of the peel, then go ahead and peel it. But when you peel away the skin off of a vegetable, you're removing both fiber and the nutrients that are right next to the skin. Also, when you cook, use the least amount of water possible, and that was going to help you minimize the loss of water-soluble vitamins, which includes all the B complex vitamins and vitamin C. And then last tip, number five, is to always include some healthy fat in every meal that contains veggies. Now, since I encourage you to have veggies pretty much at every meal or snack, that means you are going to include some nuts or seeds or avocado or perhaps some extra virgin olive oil in the same meal when you have your veggies. So those are your five tips for maximizing nutrients when you're cooking. But you know, there are some nutrients that are actually enhanced by the cooking process. 
Studies have shown that vegetables increase the availability of antioxidants like beta carotene and lutein. And you may recall from previous videos that antioxidants are vital in reducing inflammation in the body because they are able to neutralize those free radicals that damage our cells. So having more antioxidants is a great thing. So let's look at some of those antioxidants that are affected by cooking. We know that beta carotene is a very powerful antioxidant and it's converted in the liver into vitamin A. And then vitamin A is a vital nutrient for health, especially the immune system and skin and eye health. But beta carotene plays its own role outside of just being an antioxidant. And we know that consumption of beta carotene from food is associated with lower risk of cancer and also heart disease. Let's move on to the antioxidant lycopene. It's actually pink when it's extracted and it's what gives tomatoes their ruddy red color. It's also what gives watermelon and, and ruby red grapefruit their colors as well. And truly tomatoes are a fruit, but we treat them as a vegetable because they're not exceptionally sweet. But lycopene is much more easily absorbed by the body when the tomatoes are cooked. And we know that lycopene is associated with a decreased risk of prostate cancer in men and also lower heart disease risk in both men and women. And in women, it's been shown to help boost bone minerals. So you want to be sure you get the maximum lycopene from your food. And one study found that cooking tomatoes increased the availability of the lycopene by more than double. Now, it did reduce vitamin C content by 29%, which always goes back to the fact that we can eat some things cooked and some things raw. So we are going to lose some vitamin C in cooking. But the total antioxidant capacity of tomatoes in the study was increased by more than 60%. And so that's all antioxidants, not just lycopene. So lycopene doubled, and then all antioxidant activity increased by 60%. So we also know that in another study, they looked at carrots, broccoli, and zucchini, and they found that cooking increased the antioxidant capacity of those as well. So we know that cooking is a really positive thing as long as we don't overcook. So I hope um, I've enlightened you today about cooking vegetables, how to maximize nutrition of your cooked vegetables, but also encourage you to alternate both cooked and raw vegetables and have both in meals so that you are not doing one or the other. Well, I don't see any comments coming in on the live stream, so I'm going to end this. And if you do have questions after you watch this, please post them in the comment section. I hope you'll tune in next Wednesday when I give you another nutrition tip. Thank you.